guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 6. Today we're going to be talking about Episode 4. This is my review slash breakdown for the episode. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So as you guys currently know, The Flash is on a break for two weeks, and then it's going to be coming back. So this is why my Supergirl video is coming out straight away and also sorry for the lack of uploads recently but I've just been super super busy. However, things are getting back to normal and we're going to have Supergirl videos daily or you know flash videos however it turns out to be. So please be sure if you're watching this video go check out my other videos recently if you've missed out on them. I uploaded a new Supergirl video on the new set photos earlier today you can click on it right here if you want to watch that like right now or after this video, it's up to you. However, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into today's review. Okay, so we start off the Supergirl episode with a new intro. And so I don't believe there's actually been an intro as of the last few weeks. Like, as far as I can recall, I'm pretty sure they've just been doing the recaps, but they played the intro. It was slightly changed from what they normally do, so it was kind of interesting, I thought it was good, and I always do like when they do these introductions like my name is Kara zor and I am Supergirl. But yeah, that is just one new thing I realised. Then we go at the start of the episode, you have Supergirl, zor and Nixley starting off where they just jumped from the end of last episode, doing a pocket jump using Nixley's magic. And so they find themselves at the anchor in the Phantom Zone, that is exactly where Kara said they had to try and find last episode. And so they make their way there, they actually arrive, and they get to the main ship. However, when they get there, things go a little bit sideways when they fix the mirror and everything is working, because something happens with Nixley and Kara, and we'll get back to that in just a moment. But at the same time as all the Phantom Zone scenes, you have Lena, first day on the team, and she's very excited, but like she says, she's pretty nervous. Again, you have Magan, who comes in and is like, oh, we can do this to track Kara using the Phantoms. And so, pretty much right now, what they're using Magan for is just like as a plot device. And she comes across as very robotic. And that's just because she's reading off bad lines that are like, yes, this is what we have to do. And now, using this, we can do this and this and this. And it's been like this since like episode one this season. And it's a big shame because Magan is a great character. However, this is my biggest problem with the season is that she's been used as like a device to say, oh yes, this is how we can do this and that. And so it's getting a little bit tiring. I'm not going to be lying to you guys. However, that's just my own personal thing. I don't know if I'm crazy. Let me know in the comments below. Have you guys been feeling this recently or is it just me? Okay, so Lena creates this sort of Ghostbusters device. She's like, no, it's not Ghostbusters. That's a movie. This is real life. And Brady's like, yeah, it's Ghostbusters. And so he takes the device, and this is how they're going to basically try and stop the Phantoms in this episode. And so there's this big fight later where everyone is literally taken over by Phantoms. And so going back to the Phantom Zone, the mirror that they find, which is the portal, is broken. Then Kara realizes, and also Zora realizes, like, Allura would have had a backup. And so they try and think how she would think. Because if you guys don't remember, Allura was the one who created and kind of designed the Phantom Zone in this reality. And so, you know, they have a little bit of insight. And that's how Kara was able to know about the anchor with no one else inside the Phantom Zone. Unless they stumbled across it, really knows of that place. And so they get this close to returning home. And on the other side, Team Supergirl get this close to getting Kara back. But nothing seems to be quite lining up. Obviously, this is a way for them to keep them separate because obviously Melissa wasn't there for filming and so they had to prolong it a bit longer. And I'm wondering if this wasn't the case, I think they would have got Kara back from the Phantom Zone in like two to three episodes. And so obviously it's gonna be like six episodes or so. And so also on Earth you have Alex and Lena who are talking together and they talk about how the hologram feels so real and how it's like Kara is basically talking to them. And like I mentioned in my last review last week, this is literally the one way that you have the interactions between Team Supergirl and her. And it's definitely the closest way that they are interacting in reality. And so 
I think it's a smart way to actually incorporate them a little bit, even though it's just like a few scenes every few episodes. Okay, so continuing on from this, Team Supergirl are able to track down the Phantom's Lair, and at one point, Lena's device is basically revealed to be faulty, and so countless lives would be lost if they tried to save Kara by using the device. And Lena blames herself for their war, and so that war is obviously between Kara and Lena, and how they constantly went back and forth over the last few seasons, especially last season. And also how she is related to Lex, and Lex was the one who sent Kara to the Phantom Zone. And so basically, Alex comforts her and is like, No, you weren't the problem. Obviously, you've done some stuff, however, we can look past that, but you weren't the one reason why Kara is in the Phantom Zone, and so she is able to move on past this. However, Alex is very adamant, and I think Kyla did a great job in this scene. It is a very, very powerful talk, where she's just talking directly to Lena. She's like, this is why we can't do this. Even though I want to save my sister, I want to save Supergirl, we're gonna have to give up this opportunity in order to search for something better that wouldn't risk millions or thousands of lives, and Kara would agree with that, and pretty much you had that throughout the whole episode as well, inside the Phantom Zone scenes. And so, moving over to the Phantom Zone once again, we have Supergirl and Nixley who see through the portal into the fortress on Earth, so, like I said, Kara gets really close to getting back, like, if only they went through the portal, however, they don't go through the portal, apparently it's very dangerous. And so, this is the one bit where you're like, hmm, what is going on here? Because it seems like Nixley may be a villain. And we've had hints at this already. And we know later in the season she's going to be having a few confrontations with Mixie in a later episode. So I'm wondering, is Nixley more so a villain or like an anti-hero? Because apparently they are friends. According to the casting, when they cast Peter Sargent and they released something where it talked about how they were friends, but were they only talking about that one episode last week where they were really good friends? Or is she something different now? And so she talks about how she is going to go to Earth in order to get to the fifth dimension. That was her original plan. And so she had these ideas in her head. But now she reveals it to Kara and Kara's like, what have I done? And so it's revealed that it's too dangerous to go through the portal. However, Nixley still wants to go through and risk it. But Kara stops her because Kara breaks the device smashes the mirror and Nixley freaks out. Okay, so let's go back. So she was the one who attacked Kara's dad in the first place, it's revealed, and so she nearly killed him. She talks about slitting his throat. And so at that moment I was like, damn, she really be stepping the line between becoming a villain or not, because that is some harsh stuff you're saying right there, Nixley. And so yeah, Kara's dad, that's why he was attacked in the first place. It was Nixley. But she stopped the attack only because of Kara. And so Kara won't let Nixley escape. And she says, over my dead body. She smashes the mirror, like I said. And then they get to basically revealing that Zorel is lost. He is lost in his own thoughts. He isn't able to trust anything fully. And he's easy to back out of stuff. And so Kara reveals that she believes in him. However, Nixley obviously doesn't. Okay, so that foils their escape. They can't get out through the portal and they're going to have to find another way to get back to Earth. And we know they're going to get back to Earth after this two-part episode because the next two episodes are going to be in Midvale and that is set up at the end of the episode, which we'll get to in just a moment. Okay, so five phantoms take over Jean and so Jean gets absolutely obliterated by these guys. His eyes turn red and everything. This happens to Brainy too when they're in the lair and so he's taken out and so basically the whole of Team Supergirl is becoming phantoms. And so they find the chrysalis that they're trying to look for in this episode. And so this location is the phantom zone on Earth. That's how they refer to the kind of cave that they're in. And there are so many phantoms there. They're all being attacked. And so Nia gets taken over as well. And the only person who is left is Alex. This is mainly Alex's episode, I would argue. Obviously, you had Supergirl stuff over in the Phantom Zone, but the Earth scenes, it was all about Alex. And so she proves how hard she's willing to pursue 
in order to try and get Supergirl back, but also still be a hero and not, like, sacrifice everything just to get her back. So she's showing some sort of sanity and cleverness, really. And so Alex is successful. She destroys the chrysalis. And this turns everyone, and like, I mean, absolutely everyone, it shows it in the episode where, like, Silas, as an example of a character we know, he's turned back to a human, and everyone else surrounding him is, so basically all the phantoms are gone. However, there is one phantom, and this phantom is referred to as Phantom Prime throughout this episode, so they do love their nicknames, and uh, I thought it was pretty fitting, considering he is the one person on Earth who in fact wasn't a human at first, because remember all of these people have been infected by this one phantom, but Team Supergirl have this phantom all captured and so they're going to be trying to use it in order to try and track down Kara. And so Alex tells Lena in this one really really strong and powerful scene about how she could actually tackle through all of this and why she didn't try and save Kara when obviously she wanted to. And so. She confirms to Lena that she is a great help to the team and that she's always had a place in the team and she's really glad that she is around because obviously they wouldn't have even got close if it wasn't for Lena and her brilliance in terms of making devices and all of that. And so they have like this moment where they come together and it's pretty nice. Okay, so you have Supergirl facing off against Nixley. They have a fight and so Kara breaks the portal. She smashes the mirror. Nyx is extremely mad, so I wonder where they're going to go next when we start next episode. Is Nyx Lee going to turn into a full-on villain? Is that going to happen? Because I guess that's a possibility. And I mean, I think the main villains for the first half of the seasons are definitely the Phantoms. It seems like they are being centered as like one kind of big collective as a villain. And I mean, they are cool. Don't get me wrong. Like, I love the Phantoms and I like how the stories link from the Earth scenes to the Phantom Zone scenes. However, they've got nothing on like Rain or anyone like that. And obviously Supergirl's strong point normally isn't the villains apart from season three, which have Rain. So I think right now they are pretty solid and you know, they're not always the best in terms of like their fights and everything. However, you just like got a bunch of stuntmen in costume and like they've got CGI over them. And I mean, they're pretty cool. Okay, so let's continue on from here. So we have Team Supergirl back to square one. Obviously the chrysalis is destroyed. It's way too risky for them to do it. And so as they are trying to realize, hmm, how can we save Kara, but also not endanger anyone, Nia talks to Brainy about the dreams that she keeps on having. She keeps on seeing flashes of Midvale and we keep on seeing flashes of Midvale as well. And so she knows that something important should happen or will happen in Midvale because remember, Nia's powers see the future. And so basically she realizes by the end of the episode that in order to save Kara, Nia and Brainy are gonna have to go back in time and time travel. So yes, time travel is happening next episode. Supergirl barely does that, so that's super exciting. And so they plan to time travel back to Midvale in like the early 2000s and this is one point where Kara's powers were fully blown out and they need to go to a point like this so that they can get the Phantom Prime to hunt Kara because apparently like something to do with her DNA or blood is very pure at that point and it will be easier for them to get the Phantom to track Supergirl by going back in time and going to this one point. So obviously the question comes into it like did they have to go to this mid veil point? Obviously, it's just like a plot device to try and get there, and it's going to be a great episode. I'm sure of it. I can't wait to see it. However, you know, they did talk about like Red Tornado versus Supergirl. That would have been awesome to go back to because that was in Supergirl season one. And so obviously they couldn't do that because they needed someone who wasn't Melissa. So they were like, hmm, let's go young Kara and Alex because that would be a great moment to incorporate the characters and interact with our main characters, although we're not having Melissa there. So, young Kara and Alex are coming back next episode, played by Isabella Vidovic and Olivia Nakanan. Super exciting, I always love when we have the mid -Vale episodes. Okay, so last thing, something is wreaking havoc in the Phantom Zone, Kara watches over it, and that is where we leave off the episode. So that was a pretty solid episode. It was definitely an Alex-centric episode and it was 
Definitely one of the better ones this season. I still think episode 1 was the best. Maybe that's just because Kara was interacting with the team. However, I am loving the Phantom Zone scenes and I think it's very interesting that Nixley may be turning into a villain and that was like one of the most intriguing parts of the episode. However, the Alex scenes were really really good and kind of kept together all of the Earth scenes as usual. But that's about it for this video guys, thank you guys so much for watching and please be sure to check out my recent videos. Also we'll have a Supergirl trailer breakdown from the next episode where we'll be talking all about time travel and Midvale. That's going to be coming out later today so please be sure to stick around for that and turn on notifications to not miss that video or any future daily uploads because we upload daily. So for now, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.